Hey guys and girls, uh, well, 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 welcome back to another example video here, uh, example 9, we're going to be going through some simple arrays and just really quickly uh, seeing what we can do and how we can store lots of numbers in one single nice box, okay, so they're really useful, arrays are really useful, there's different, there are several different types of arrays that you'll be uh, learning about later, but we'll just go through the simple one right now, just the basic and uh, so let's just get started here. I included C time for random since we're going to be doing some dice throwing in here and just storing those random numbers in our box, in our array. Uh, so let's just start here. Let's say, let me just make sure I zoom in as well this time here. Okay, that should be fine. Um, so we need a constant here. And I'll explain why. Unsigned. You don't need to have it unsigned, but I like to. Because you can't have, whoops, unsi unsigned please. Uh, size of array. It's really important to keep track of the size of your array and this is better to do it this way. So constant is because we never want this to ever change again. Okay, if I try to change uh, size of array here to 12, make it bigger. Well, it won't work because it is the L value is a non-modifiable value. So we need to make sure this is always the same. Unsigned means that, yeah, sure, it, we can make a bigger positive number and we can't make a smaller number. This is actually unsigned int, but you can just shortcut it and write unsigned only. Uh, but anywho, since the array can't be of a negative size, why have a regular int, right? Uh, so now we have the size. Now let's actually make our array. So we're going to have an array of the type integer. We can only store integers in this box. We cannot store anything else. Remember that you can only have one type of data in every, you know, in, in your array, okay? It's a box for that specific data type. So int, uh, let's call it number array, okay? And this is how you define an array with brackets. So size of array. And we don't initialize it. All of these, remember, in here, there are a bunch of, there are 10 of these, okay? I think that's 10, I'm not sure. But anywho, it goes from 0 to 9. The size is 10, but it starts at 0. That's really important to know. It doesn't start at 1, 2, 3. It starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9. And that position is called an index. So each one of these are ordered. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 9. And that in that way, you can access individual boxes in this big box of arrays. Of course, we could have made several uh, A and B and just stored numbers in there, but this way, we can have a nice ordered box with smaller boxes in it. So those are undefined right now. Those values are under, there is no values on the integers. So if we try to use any of these numbers in here and multiply or add something to them, we'll have an error because they're not zero. So what we need to do is we need to use a for loop that we had from last time uh, that we learned and uh, size of array. This is really important. That's why we made this variable here. So we can reuse it everywhere. If I change it here, we'll change everywhere. That's the important thing. We can't change this somewhere else, but we can change it up here where we create it. Okay? At the uh, at the beginning of the program or before we created this. So, uh, the magic is that we always know the size of the array. So, we know this is only going to go from 0 up to 9. Okay? Less than, while i is less than 10. It won't go up to 10. I will never go up to 10. It will go up to 9 and then stop. So there we go. Now we're going to initialize our array with a bunch of random numbers. Uh, let's say up to 100. Why not? Why not? Or let's say, yeah, let's say 50, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So then we'll have a bunch of numbers in there, right? And we'll just print those numbers out. And I'll explain why I have an I, an I in here in the brackets really quickly, but you might have guessed it already, but I'll still explain. The I mean, we could write one, we could have made a bunch of these, whoops, we could have made a bunch of these, right? And we could have just said one, two, you know, and so on, until we go to nine. But that's not why we, that's why we have a for loop, right? We don't want to have to do that. We already know I is going to be incrementing from zero to nine. So we just put an I in there. So every loop, it's this is going to change. It's going to take the next value and the next value until it gets to the last one. And it will fill all of those in. And then it will print all of those out. So that is a simple program here. Let's see if it works. Yes, it did. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, boom. 
boom and these are stored in here now they're stored in this container here so we can at any time go in here and uh, change any of these integers let's change the first one to 500 and let's change the last one to 1000 now if we tried to access 10 here that wouldn't work that would crash the program that would crash and burn and break and explode you know why because yes you guessed it we can only go from 0 to 9 if we had 11 here we could access 10 right but we don't we have 10 so just so you know um, there we go now we change them now we can print them out again after we change them we don't want to do this again we already initialized all the other ones uh, boom let's see so and then here we see we changed the first one to 500 and the last one to 1000 so there we go that's basically our program right there there's nothing more to say uh, except that you can make dynamic arrays later arrays that can change in size and grow and expand and uh, multiply or whatever you want to uh, want them to do and uh, copy arrays into each other and uh, arrays of uh, undefined type like at time of creation uh, while you're running the program you can create an array of a specific type and all kinds of cool stuff you can do later for games you know or whatever you want to program so just keep in mind that this is not the extent of arrays arrays are really complex and dynamic you can make uh, two-dimensional arrays three-dimensional arrays to keep grids and and like 3d objects and matrices and stuff so uh, just keep that in mind this is a start this is a beginning so Rome wasn't built in a day you know so uh, I hope you learned something today thank you for watching and I'll try to keep zooming in the videos I forget sometimes but uh, yeah have a great day and I'll see you next time